The prosperous kingdom of Bosia buzzed with the lively sounds of people, their voices intermingling in the bustling marketplace. However, there was one thing you wouldn't hear, the enchanting melodies or graceful dances as those were forbidden in this kingdom. Hmm? Nevertheless, rules couldn't bind everyone, including Princess Barina of the kingdom. Since childhood, Barina had been stayed within the vast castle without any friends. The king and queen, engrossed in ruling the kingdom and strict prohibitions, forbade her from leaving the castle. Barina's best moment of joy came at when she discovered a beautiful music box <laughs> huh? with a charming ballerina twirling to the melodious tunes in the king and queen's chamber. Upon finding Barina swaying to the music, the queen rushed in and hastily huh? confiscated huh? the music box. Barina, this is not a toy for you to play with. Remember, music and dance are forbidden. Don't let us catch you involved in such things. Yes, mother. However, mm. prohibitions couldn't suppress Barina's love mm. for that music box. Mm. Taking advantage of her parents' absence, she uh. sneakily took the mm. box and hid it for herself. As night mm. fell, young Barina <laughs> opened the secret music box under the bright moonlight. Uh. To her surprise, mm. the ballerina wasn't stationary anymore but gracefully danced throughout the entire musical piece. Immersed in the dance, Barina stood up and began practicing her own ballet steps. <laughs> From that day forward, Barina diligently trained in secret every night, accompanied by the magical dancer from the music box. Time nurtured her beauty and dancing talent. As the princess grew up, her parents remained strict, limiting her connection with the people outside the castle. Thus, Barina resorted to disguises, sneaking out to satisfy her curiosity about the world beyond the castle. During one such escapade, Barina stumbled upon a lively huh? underground basement immersed in music, hidden in the streets. <laughs> There, she could freely indulge in her passion for dance. People in that basement shared their <laughs> love for music and dance with her. And Barina made a fantastic friend, Edon. Despite his <laughs> humble background, Edon had an immense passion for art and Barina's graceful movements. Amazing, Barina. <laughs> Your dance steps were as light as walking on air. Thank you! Now let's stand up and dance with everyone! Come on, hurry up! Barina's daily life continued peacefully until her birthday. <laughs> As she entered her room, a mysterious voice echoed. Barina! Huh? Barina! Who? Who's there? Entering the room huh? cautiously, she huh? searched around but found no one. I'm here at the music box, Barina! Music box dancer? And you can even talk? Why weren't you scared when I danced? And now you scream like that. Hello, my name is Rosette, and I used to be a human like you. It turned <laughs> out that six years ago, during her ballet performance, Rosette had been mysteriously cursed. But she couldn't <gasps> remember the source of the curse. When she regained consciousness, she had hmm. forgotten her past hmm? and discovered herself hmm as a motionless dancer in that music box. Until Barina opened the box, a magical force allowed Rosette to move and perform. You can move now and you can speak. Could it be any way that the curse be about to be lifted? Perhaps, but it has been six years since I could move, and I have to wait another six years without knowing what will happen next. So let me help you. I'll find a way to lift the curse for you. In the following days, Barina focused on searching for ways to lift the curse, but found no leads. 
Feeling discouraged, <laughs> Marina sought refuge in the mysterious underground basement to escape the troubles within the castle. Huh? Considering Edon a trustworthy friend, Marina shared her princess identity, the cursed music box, and Rosette's story. It's strange, Marina. The king and queen prohibit music in this kingdom, yet they keep a cursed music box in their chamber. You should reconsider that chest for investigation. Exactly huh? that box! Excellent observation, hmm. Edon! I couldn't think of it before. Try to find out. If there's nothing new, bring Rosette's music box here tomorrow, and we'll figure it out together. Marina returned to the castle, sneaking huh? into her parents' room to search the mentioned chest. Hmm? It contained children's ballet costumes and a picture of a stage in some unknown place. Still finding no clues to lift the curse, Barina returned to her room, looking at Rosette with disappointment. It's okay. We will soon find a way. When we do, we'll dance ballet together. Moved by Rosette's encouragement, Barina regained her determination and resolved to find a solution. The next morning, as agreed, Barina sneaked out to meet Edon as promised. Right at that moment, the king and queen found their daughter disguised, leaving with the music box. Marina, why do you have that box? Give it to me immediately! As the king rushed there to get the music box, he accidentally injured his daughter. Seizing the opportunity while everyone was shocked, Barina quickly took the music box and ran away. Idan, waiting outside the gate, saw huh? Barina running and swiftly extended his hand to pull her away. When they stopped, Barina realized this was the stage depicted in the painting she found in the chest. Huh? Where's the music box, Barina? As Barina took out the music box, Edon immediately performed a magical spell, causing Rosette huh? to appear as huh? a spirit. Barina, what's happening? Where are we? Edon, how did you do magic? Indeed, I found a way to rescue Rosette. Watch this. Barina and Rosette anxiously watched as Edon performed the spell, hoping the curse would be lifted. Unexpectedly, the music box shattered into pieces, and Rosette's spirit faded huh? away. Rosette! Rosette! Edon! Why did you harm her? <laughs> Two foolish princess sisters were easily deceived without knowing it. Princess, princess sisters? Yes, two sisters, daughters of hmm. the king and queen, <laughs> Verena and Rosette. Huh? To the shock huh? of the two sisters, Edon revealed the lost memories from the past. When Edon was young, hmm. he lived in poverty hmm. to the extent huh? that he had to beg for food, huh? but people always rejected huh? and drove him away. One day, he saw the two sisters, Barina and Rosette, playing outside the castle, hmm. and wherever they huh? went, they were warmly <laughs> welcomed, causing Edon to feel intense ah. jealousy. Those two kids are already well-dressed, and they still received more. It's so unfair! Therefore, Udon <laughs> harbored resentment towards everyone, especially the two princesses. At that time, mm -hmm. the kingdom was preparing for a grand festival <laughs> to exchange cultural experiences with neighboring countries, and the two princesses were supposed to perform a ballet to welcome them. <laughs> Both of them practiced diligently, with Rosette being graceful and agile, while Barina struggled a bit. Barina, why can't you dance the entire routine? Look at Rosette and learn. Thus, Barina always spent extra time practicing, but the results were not any better. The pressure from the royal family and the exhausting training made Barina feel overwhelmed and disheartened. It's too exhausting. I wish Rosette would dance poorly during the performance, then Mom wouldn't blame me anymore. Idan, observing the two sisters, overheard this and came up with a plan to harm them. 
That night, the whole stage was eagerly watching the performance of Rosette and Barina. Barina, instead of making Rosette dance worse, I'll now put both of you into this music box forever. You two won't have to dance anymore. However, Adon made a mistake while casting that dark magic, causing both princesses to lose their memories. Only Rosette was trapped and transformed into a music box dancer. The king and queen hurried to check on their daughter and mobilized <laughs> soldiers to investigate, but Eden managed to escape from there. <laughs> Marina, for years, your parents have been busy trying to save your sister. They didn't want yeah. you to go out to keep you safe, mm? but you've ruined everything, Marina. The painful huh? past story mm. left the two sisters, uh? Barina and mm. Rosette, stunned, especially mm. Barina. Mm. Rosette, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said mm. that. Barina, mm. it's not your fault. Uh? I should have practiced more with you. The king and queen, <laughs> arriving just in time, chased <gasps> Edon, who tried to escape but couldn't evade the encirclement of the royal soldiers. Hmm. Seeing Barina and the soul of Rosette were embracing and crying, the king and queen felt heartbroken, comforting, and consoling their precious princesses. Barina, this is my last wish. Let's perform that complete ballet together. Everyone understood the sister's wish, huh? stepping back to let the spotlight <laughs> shine on the stage. Thanks to the nights of training together, every dance move of the two sisters flowed smoothly, like a perfect harmony. At the mm. end, the two sisters <laughs> embraced each other. Suddenly, Barina felt huh? warmth from beside her. Rosette was no longer a soul. She had returned to her complete human form. Rosette, you're back! My body, everything is real. Thank you, Barina. Once, mm. Barina's jealousy had driven the two sisters apart. Now, the love between them created a magical solution to Rosette's curse. From that day, all dancing activities in the kingdom were restored, <laughs> even more vibrant than before. Barina and Rosette performed together everywhere, gaining a reputation as the most talented dancing sisters of their time. As for Edon, he was punished by being sent to hard labor on a fishing boat drifting at sea throughout the year. When asked what is the most beautiful love in the world, almost all girls have the same result, the love story of the mermaid and the unicorn. The crystallization of love is an extremely lovely and beautiful female twins. They overcame many differences to come together. But then, one day, because of that difference, they decided to separate. Keep the distance between the two children. Two little princesses who grew up not knowing much about each other, only known through the story of the father or the mother. Mom, <laughs> father's going to the ice palace. Yes, your sister Uritu. Oh, my poor daughter. <laughs> Again, the most beautiful, good, and honest daughter. But the suffering cannot live with her mother, right? At the same time, in the castle of fire in the clouds. <laughs> Dad. Can't we just meet mother only? Why do we need to meet the other in the aquarium? What's going on? You have half of your blood on ice, don't you? Besides seeing you, Jeannie will definitely be happy. She... She's so obedient. She's adorable. She's vivacious. Mm -hmm. Well, happiness is everywhere around her. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, not, not like, like me. me. Mm -hmm. Because before that, the two were weak. The different environment would not be good for health. So it was not until the age of 18 that the two princesses met at the grown-up party. <laughs> Dad, I finally got to meet you! <laughs> Mom! Well, look how beautiful the new unicorn princess's rainbow hair is! She's even prettier than Princess Jeannie! What? I'm still on the side of the Little Mermaid Jenny! 
Nothing is more beautiful than her iridescent tail. <sighs> the comparison of the two princesses who disliked each other now hated each other even more. On the eve of their 18th birthday, their parents gave each of them a dream catcher to pray with. Make a wish for it, that which you desire most. When you wake up, your wish will come true. And remember, do not wish harm on others. <laughs> because she was jealous of her sister, Jeannie wished she had her beautiful hair. And Ori wishes she owned the iridescent tail that belongs to the mermaid. Please make, make it come, come true. true! Because they wish they had each other's characteristics, Dreamcatcher has done it. A combined version of two sisters very beautiful. <gasps> Dad, Mom, let me sleep a little longer! What? Why my voice? You two! Oh my god! What happened? <gasps> hmm? Ah! Ori and Jeannie beg their parents to turn everything back to normal. But they themselves have not yet found a way. From now until you return to normal, you two must live in harmony. It's not good to be like that. This person wants this. That person likes that. So they finally decide to defy the day to own the body. During this time, the other was forced to sleep. But why do I have to go to bed first? <sighs> because this is my home. About this strange transformation, in order not to cause panic with the people, the parents only explained that at the age of 18, <laughs> Jeannie was a hybrid, so there would be changes. <laughs> the two sisters agree. They start thinking about how to break each other up. Specifically, the next morning, when Ori woke up, forced to decide a series of scandals of her sister, Jeannie. But of course, Ori was just as mischievous. Before going to bed, she will give Jeannie a big surprise. Ah, how dare you do that! They fight like this forever. However, it was because they wanted to find out their weaknesses and what their sisters did not like that Ori and Jeannie knew better about each other. They understand better that their sisters are no different from them. Because of the separation of their parents, they suffer a lot of hurt, suffer from an emotional shortage. Jeannie likes a mermaid named Josh, a womanizer, a lover of the ocean. In the past, he had always used Jeannie's infatuation to take advantage of her. Just like that. But for him, Jeannie was too boring. There was nothing interesting. But liking is still liking. Just one action. An unusual look of Josh also makes Jeannie happy throughout the day. <laughs> Jeannie, I heard your cute sister just got there. Introduce me. While in one body, Ori realized the danger, hate, of this guy Josh. Ori deliberately ignored Cole to Josh. Me and my pretty sister both hate promiscuous people like you the most. Better stay away from us for a bit. The paradox is that when Jeannie, Josh still thinks, no longer rushes after him, Josh saw that she finally had something interesting. <laughs> And the next morning, when it was Jeannie's turn to wake up, Josh came to ask her out. <laughs> Not happy yet. You were so cute yesterday. Jeannie, if you was like that every day, I would have liked you a long time ago. Jeannie realizes that the person Josh likes is Ori, not her. Why is it always her? The anger made Jeannie make a crazy decision. Knowing that Ori's weakness is cold, Jeannie angrily travels to the frozen depths where the ocean has the lowest temperature. Doing, you fool? The two sisters then got into a heated argument. A loud noise awakens the sea beast. It's like a storm coming at them. He was very strong and refused to let the two sisters escape. Jeannie quickly realized a sea oyster used to exchange information in the ocean to send to their parents. The two put aside their personal feuds and worked together to solve the immediate problem. Jeannie, don't worry. Unicorn blood heals quickly. We can hold on until someone comes to rescue. 
Although they know how to control their body, listen to each other to find the element of fire and ice, the sea monster is not an easy one. He quickly hurt the two princesses. Since there was also Ori in her body, Genie, who was in front of the cold temperature caused by the monster, started to weaken. At the same time, using too much strength, the unicorn's hair also lost its brilliant rainbow color. Just like this, not good, I'm afraid. Don't say anything, I'll take care of it! Ginny, I'm sorry if I hurt you. In fact, over the years, I have always been curious, looking forward to meeting you so that our family can reunite, try to repair your relationship with parents, and have fun. Ori lost her unicorn hair, her hair changed color, and the two sisters broke off their vows with Dreamcatcher, returning to make two separate bodies. Ori, come on, wake up! I forbid you to sleep! When Genie was unimpeded, she was able to exert her power. Finally, their parents arrived, just as Genie was fainted beside Ori. <laughs> Genie woke up first, but Ori had no luck. Losing the unicorn horn and the color of her hair, Ori sank unconsciously, unable to return. Dad! Mom! Everybody do something! I'll do anything to wake you up! Tails! Can I change by my tails? Calm down, Genie. We're trying to. At least you're finally getting along. Fortunately. On the other side of the iceberg, where there's a powerful witch, maybe she can help us. She herself helped me get my feet to meet you. <laughs> <clears throat> the mermaid mother and Genie decided to find a witch, while father stayed, using his power to keep Ori warm. With the family united, Ori finally wakes up. Genie hugged her happily. <laughs> Through this incident, Mermaid and Unicorn also healed their feelings for each huh? other. <laughs> Heron should be like this. That's right! <laughs> they decide to stay together, not to force the innocent children to be separated again. Wow, the great gods granted Meteor Shower for the world again. Yes, how beautiful their love is. I admired them so much. They had to overcome many challenges to be happy like today. Do you want to know their stories? Oh, of course. Please tell me. Once upon a time, in a village, there lived a girl named Tiggy. She was really gentle and tender with an outstanding beauty. Wow. Hebe is the most beautiful and magnificent girl in this world. Yes, her beauty overwhelms everything in this world. <laughs> Hebe and Leo were close friends since they were kids. They grew up together and they were deeply in love with each other. However, due to the difference in the family condition, Leo was always ridiculed because his family was so poor. People huh? said that he was not deserved to be with Hebe. Leo! Do you care about what they say? I know that you love me just because I am me, instead of anything else from me. I also love you by all my heart, and I will be with you forever. I get it. Don't worry. I will always be by your side forever. The rumors about Hebe's beauty reached Venus, the goddess huh? of beauty. There is someone in this world can be more beautiful than me. I have to go there to see. The goddess of beauty disguised in a cloak and went to the market. She saw Hebe <laughs> buying some stuff, and she could hear the compliments of the people about Hebe's outstanding beauty. She immediately approached Hebe, and when there was no one there, she casted a spell to make a smoke and pull Hebe away. Seeing that, Leo immediately chased after and protected Hebe. When Hebe didn't know what was happening, she saw the goddess of beauty by her side. The goddess of beauty was so jealous with Hebe that she decided to cast a spell to take it away. But no one had the right to force others 
to abandon their beauty. <laughs> Even the goddess of beauty couldn't be able to touch it. Therefore, she angrily casted another spell, making Phoebe fall into the sleep of death. She hadn't belonged to the land of living anymore. Leo ran there. Seeing Hebe was huh? deep into the sleep, he was really hurtful. What did Hebe do with you? Why did you treat her like that? Leo was so angry that he lost control. He intended to fight against the goddess of beauty, but she used her power to knock him far away. No one will be allowed to harm Hebe. I will use all of my love to protect her. <laughs> I love your lover is lying there in the sleep of death. You're now in different worlds. What can your love do? Huh? If you want to prove that your love can save her, just go find God of Love. If your love can be acknowledged by the God of Love, then I will also acknowledge Hebe's beauty and spare her life. That's okay. For her, I can do everything. No matter how difficult it is. Let me see how grand your love is. You have two weeks to find the God of Love. After two weeks, if there is nothing changed, your lover will belong huh? to hell forever. Remember that! Leah kissed Hebe to say goodbye to her and determinedly set out to save her. Leah went to find the God of Love. He walked day by day, night by night, until he found a ragged old woman sitting huh? under a tree. Kind Leo quickly brought his water for her to drink and raise her up. Thank you, kind man. What are you doing here in this forest? I'm on my way to find the goddess of love. Do you know the way to her place? If you know it, please tell me. I have to go there and beg her to help me save the girl I love. The route is really difficult and dangerous. I think you should come back. Don't waste your time. No, please help me. I have to save her by all costs. Your love must be so deep hmm. to make you sacrifice hmm. everything like that. I love her more than anything in this world. I will do anything for her. Hmm. Right after Leo finished speaking, a light shone in front of him. In just a huh? blink of an eye, he found himself huh? standing on a fairy world. I turned into the old woman to test you. If your love isn't big enough, when I said that the route would be so difficult, you would give up immediately. But you ignored all the difficulties and dangers to overcome all challenges to save the girl you love. It really touched me. My god, because of having a wonderful beauty, my lover was punished by the god Venus into the sleep of death. Please show me the way to save her because I don't have much time. If there is any delay, she will be gone forever. How great your love is. Alright, in that faraway galaxy, there is a cluster including seven meteors. You have to go there and bring the most beautiful and brightest meteor back. On the full moon day of the end of July, you just need to throw it down to the earth. Hebe will wake up. But when you can save your lover, you will have to exchange by turning yourself into a meteor to replace the one you took away. For the rest of your life, you can just be a silent star in the sky. Will you accept it? Huh? I agree. I accept to exchange everything just for her. The mm. goddess of love granted him a light stone to lead Leo to the place where the meteor cluster mm. is located. The stone huh? led the way. Leo followed and finally he could reach that faraway huh? galaxy. There was the brightest meteor which was sparkling 
Leo found hmm. all ways to reach that meteor, but he couldn't be able to touch it. When he touched the meteor, it shone brightly, making him dazzled. He tried to touch it, but he couldn't hold it. It's just like a water vapor. Huh? Leo was so clever that he quickly raised the light stone toward the brightest meteor. The two sources of light met each other and combined together. Then the stone flew toward Leo's hand. Like what the goddess of love said, if I wait for the exact time to throw the meteor down, it will be over one day as the due date. How can I save Hebe? It's not right. I have to throw the meteor right down to the earth to save her. Then, he immediately threw the meteor down to the earth. When being thrown down, the meteor was broken into hundreds of pieces, illuminating a wide area of the sky. That's the first meteor shower in the world. Leo's body gradually became clear. The light brought him back to the coffin of Hebe. At that place, inside the splendid crystal coffin, Hebe woke up. <laughs> Venus, the goddess of beauty, was really surprised when seeing the meteor shower and the blur soul of Leo. Hebe hurtfully ran there to hug Leo so tight on her lap. Leo gradually <laughs> faded away. Leo, what's wrong with you? Don't leave me here, please. How can I live without you? I just need you to live. That's the happiest thing in my life. I will be a star who will watch you for my whole life. Leo, hmm? because you are so hasty that you didn't follow my words, you will be punished. You won't be able to become a meteor. Your soul will be sent to hell forever. My great hmm. goddesses, I agree to exchange my hmm. beauty and even my life. I just hope that I can be his companion in the last time of life. I want to be sent to hell with him! Venus was really surprised. She thought for a while then turned to the goddess of love and taught something. Mm. Then she took Hebe's beauty away. Hebe became huh? old, huh? wrinkled, and her body gradually became clear. Leo mm. took all of his mm. last strength to hold Hebe on his lap. He touched her old wrinkled face, then the two souls shared a touching kiss. Right at that huh? moment, the light shone out, <laughs> turned Hebe and Leo into the god of star, the two brightest stars in the galaxy. Hmm. Hebe and Leo hugged each other so tight. Hmm? Hebe, your beauty overwhelms everything in this world. But I realize that you have not only that beauty, but also a bright hmm. inner beauty. That's hmm. why you deserve hmm. to have the happiness and also that splendid beauty. From that moment, Hebe and Leo became the gods of stars, brought the light and the meteor shower to the earth. The meteor shower they created was also a chance for the people to have a wish which is proved by the sacrifice of a great love. What would you do if one day you found yourself in the body of another person? Huh? Moreover, that person even has totally contrast life with you. Sophia had to experience an accident like huh? that. Let's follow today's story to know what did she do to solve all the problems. Sophia was a beautiful and clever princess, but she was always sad because she could decide nothing for her own. She couldn't even refuse her upcoming wedding, because this was the marriage to save the treasury of the royal family. Meanwhile, far outside the palace, in the poorest place of the kingdom, there lived a girl named Zelda. She usually intervened in the injustice actions, making the thugs there really hate her. But she was so agile that they could never chase after her. How is the life of the people in that palace? It must be really comfortable. Wish that I could live there. I won't have to worry about the food anymore. Hmm? Wish that I could have a comfortable life out there. I can be able to decide everything as I want. Suddenly, a strong wind rose. 
making Sophia in balance and tumble to the river. The next morning, Sophia found huh? herself in the body of a strange girl. Huh? Hmm? What happened to me? Where am I? Didn't understand what had happened, the thugs huh? from outside suddenly barged into the huh? room. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Big brother, she is the one who interrupted us yesterday. Zelda, hmm? you always hmm? want to mess with hmm? others' business. Today, I have to teach you a huh? lesson. Big Brother, what's wrong with you? Huh? After asking him, they found that he had rubbed a mushroom from a kid and he hadn't known that it was a poisonous mushroom. <laughs> By her knowledge, Sophia helped the thug overcome the critical moment. I'm so hungry. Is there anything to eat here? Zelda, do you know what time it is? Quickly work! There are so many things to do! You are mistaken! I'm not Zelda, I'm... Huh? No matter what Sophia huh? explained, the mistress didn't care at all. She forced her to do the hard work. Until noon, she was given a meal, but it was so dry and hard to swallow. Didn't want to accept the situation, she found her way back to the palace. But no matter how hard she tried to explain, no one believed her. They even chased her away without having a mercy. She had no other choice but to come back to the rundown old house. I have always wanted to get the freedom. But I could never imagine that the life outside is so difficult like this. Suddenly, the mistress entered her room without noticing. You're still tired, right? Poor you. You are always strong and agile. But how did you fall on that river without being able to get back? It's so lucky for you that I passed by at that time. I bring you some food. Just eat them and get well soon. <laughs> There is still someone who come here at this time? <laughs> you came here to mess up with Zelda again? Today I'm here. Don't make trouble. No, no, no. This time I come here to thank Zelda. I don't have the bad intentions. <clears throat> I wanna thank you for the thing happened this morning. These eggs are from the chicken of my family. I didn't take it from anyone. Zelda realized that the life there was difficult, but the people were so warm-hearted. This was the thing she couldn't get from that luxurious palace. <laughs> from that time, Sophia gradually got used to the new life there. People here also loved her so much. Until one day, Zelda and the buddy of Sophia suddenly appeared and looked for her. Zelda wanted to get her buddy back from Sophia because the life in the palace was really relaxed, but she lost all of her freedom. Zelda predicted that the river had been the reason that made their bodies swap. If they wanted to swap back, they had to go there again. It has been so difficult for me to have a free life. I won't go back there. You're so selfish. That life belongs to me. You can say anything, but it's nonsense to me. It will be all right if you want the king to be harmed. Huh? What do you mean? Zelda hmm? told her the things that huh? she had known. That day, being too bored, Zelda found her way to climb up the huh? roof. She reached the Earl's room by accident. Hmm? and she had been able to listen to his story. The royal gold mines got exhausted quickly just because he secretly extracted it for years, and he used that amount of gold as the wedding present. And the wedding would order his people to poison the king. 
Under the position of the princess's husband, he would be able to take the throne. I told the king this story, but he didn't believe me, and especially the thing that I had been able to climb up the roof. I have to think about a way to stop him. So just give me back the body, then go back to save the king. No, huh? you also have to help me. This is the huh? problem of your royal family. Is there anything related to me? When the greedy earl takes the throne and rules this kingdom, all the people won't be able to live easily. Huh? Please, I will give you back this body then. So, Zelda had to help Sophia make a plan to expose the cunning <laughs> earl. Zelda asked for the king's permission to visit the earl's palace to build up their love. Thinking that his daughter had changed her mind, the king agreed. When they arrived, Zelda would find a way to distract the earl to give Sophia time to find the evidence. Sophia disguised into a talented baker. Who was discovered by the princess. <laughs> she could make a delicious pie for the earl to taste, so the princess brought her there. <laughs> Sophia snuck into the earl's room to search. of secret routes which connected to the tunnels of the royal family. This time you won't be able to refuse it. Hmm. Hmm. Earl, where are you going? I have been waiting for you so long. Oh, I have to get some stuffs. I'll be right there. A while later, <laughs> Sophia finally served a hot, delicious plate of cake. Where have you gone? I didn't see you in the kitchen. My Earl, earlier I forgot some ingredients, so I had to go out to buy them. Alright, please enjoy that cake. It won't be delicious while cooling down. After getting the evidences, <laughs> they immediately found a reason to leave. Leaving for a while, they suddenly heard the hoof bear switch chased after them. Knowing that they were detected, the two immediately urged the horse, making them run faster. Suddenly, the wagon deviated, making the two tumble to the river. Sophia! Where are you? Sophia! I'm here! Help! Don't worry, I will get you ashore. Damn it! This body is too weak! I can't... If only I could take my body back. My life will end up like this! I even involved Zelda on this! If only I wasn't too selfish to drag her into this! I want to see parents! I want to be myself! Surprisingly, Zelda found her body full of strength! She rose up and was able to save Sophia. It turns out huh? that while being on the river, the two girls were turned back to their own bodies. <laughs> At that moment, the Earl was pretending to blame himself for not being able to save the princess. Seeing her, he was totally astonished and froze in shock. Hmm. Hmm. With those evidences, the Earl couldn't be able to refuse anything. From that day, the king allowed Sophia to decide her own life. 
Zelda was also back to her comfortable and free life. Sophia also didn't forget the slum where her new friends were living. She went back and helped the people there. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Both of them finally knew how to treasure what they were having. <laughs> it was the best day in the history of the Western Empire, when the Prince Daniel they loved was crowned. Whoa, Whoa, Daniel! Daniel! Huh? Daniel! 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 A coronation present from all flood realms was sent endlessly. Egyptian messenger to present the kingdom. The most lavish and flamboyant was the messenger from Egypt, with long lines of precious treasures, especially the most beautiful dancers. The wobble of the dancer made it impossible for someone at the party to assist watching. Even Lady huh? Catherine, the emperor's lover. Passionately looking into the eyes of the dancer, a strange feeling huh? gradually possessed Catherine's body. Right at that night, she suddenly got serious fever. When she awoke, Catherine found herself lying in an ancient coffin in a strange shrine unlike a palace. Standing next to her was a man in ancient Egyptian clothes. Welcome back, my queen. Where is this? Huh? Who are you? What have you done? Huh? Daniel! Daniel! Where's my sword? What is it? Please, calm down. I'll tell you the whole story. Through the monk's words, Catherine found out that the place where they lived was Egypt 1500 years before her time. 200 years ago, the Miao clan and human lived together, depicting the clan exalted as a god, <laughs> held a dignified and important position. She is the Queen Mint of the Kingdom of Egypt, helping Pharaoh with state affairs. Egypt was once a prosperous power until the Persian Empire invaded. They are supported by the serpent god Apophis to improve the military. <laughs> Meanwhile, taking advantage of the Egyptian Cad warship, the Persian devised a plan to draw a cat image on the shield for the vanguard, so the Egyptian archer dared not shoot the arrow. Egypt huh? gradually fell, and the pharaoh was captured. Huh? <laughs> Howdy, our queen Mitt. No matter how strong you are, you can't stand against the mighty power of Persia. I will spare the lives of the Egyptians, provided by your dip. For the sake of the country, the queen Mitt agreed to the cruel conditions. Children of the Nile! I chose to give up my life to save the lives of innocent souls. Don't worry, I'll soon be resurrected 200 years later, under a soul from the future of 1,500 years. Huh? <laughs> Since then, the monks of all generations had left a will to have their children to learn the special spell, and wait for 1,500 years later to bring the queen back, exterminate Apophis and save Egypt. Nonsense! Truly this is the story that the Egyptian envoy made up to attack me and the Empire. Don't even think about it. <coughs> no! That's impossible! Guards, after Queen! Uh. Huh? Catherine wandered almost fell into the hands of the slave traders. <laughs> Under the dominant of Persia, they no longer worship cats. Well, look what we've got. Hey, pretty, why are you so hurried? Uh -huh. Guards, hurry up and get that little brat. In desperation, Catherine met a boy who resembled her Daniel. Huh? Luckily, Darius redeemed Catherine from the slave merchant. Da huh? Dan Daniel? You got the wrong idea. I'm Darius, Prince of Persia. What I'm going to tell you here may scare you, but it's the truth. Huh? Situation is very bad now. My father listened to Apophis' instigation, constantly huh? offering the living to the serpent goddess. I've cherished a plan to beat her for a long time but she's too strong. I received a poetic warning about your arrival, Miss Catherine. Or is it Mint, the only one who can put an end to the current dilemma? Identical to what the monk said. What is the truth? No way you're Daniel, right? Told you, I'm not du- uh, uh, Apparently not. I saw her, her heart beating. Uh, I'm in so much pain. 
Are you okay? Da Darius? Huh? Fine. I know you don't belong in this world. The only way back is to destroy Apophis. She's only weakened in the Eclipse. We have to take advantage of this opportunity. Huh? Eclipse? As soon as the Eclipse took place, the Egyptian army assembled by the monk had to take cover to prolong the time preventing the Persian guards outside. The rest followed Catherine and Darius deep into the palace. Having passed through a series of hidden traps, they finally reached the middle of the palace itself, meeting Apophis. Oh, Queen Mitt, my old friend from a long time ago. Unannounced visitors don't seem very polite, do they? But still, I should welcome you warmly. Well, I'm so hospitable. Children, you hear me? Huh? Answering from the Great Pits, the Vipers snapped their tongues. Huh? <laughs> Under the cooperation of Darius and Meow, the snakes were quickly taken care of. <laughs> Apophis uses her greatest ability, hypnotizing them. What's wrong with you all? Wake up! Daniel! Daniel! They're all hypnotized! No! She got you too! The other guards couldn't stop Catherine, but she couldn't pass Darius. Soon, Catherine was cornered. Darius! Daniel! It's me! What am I doing? Catherine took advantage of the negligence, plunging towards Apophis. Huh? Everyone thought it's time to congratulate each other, but soon after, Apophis came back. That's it? Queen Mitt seems to be getting much weaker. Well, it's a compliment mm. to the prince who broke my hypnosis. Alin ala antamut! Come on, pin the knife into the heart of Queen Mitt! To prevent himself from doing that, Darius sacrificed himself so that the viper would bite into his hand. The venom would keep him away, free from total hypnosis. Kath, it's safe now. Apophis' men have only one weakness. Only attacking that weakness can completely eliminate her. No, Darius, no! That pain really agitated Catherine. She closed her eyes, transformed her body, brought back Mitt's memory, and suddenly opened the goddess eye. Thanks to that, she could realize a strange signal on Apophis. Catherine recites the curse, around which there are large circles of letters, crashing straight into the weakness. Apophis then gradually vanished. How dare you, Mitt! When you read this curse, your memory will also be completely sealed, never to appear again. You're willing to pay such a high price? Ah! I accept it, as long as Egypt stays peaceful forever. Just like Apophis said, the magic of the goddess, as well as the spirit of the snake, will sleep forever in Egypt from now on. My queen, forgive us. We are late. You... your body... Catherine's body slowly dissipated. Without my presence, you must still try to protect Egypt. Protect the lives of the happy and full people. Mm. Thousand years curse exists. Burying are all intruders. Tomb raiders will be punished. Peace for Egypt forever. Hmm. Don't worry. We'll see each other soon. Long live the queen! Catherine then woke up, went back to the modern empire, where Daniel was still by her side to take care of her. <laughs> Kath, you're awake! Daniel, I come back! Tight, it's too tight! Huh? I know you're glad to see me, but it's not good to wake up with too much strength. Daniel, do you believe in prehistoric grace? Did your illness affect you this huh? much? Come on, you're sick. You need more rest. I don't know if there is a prehistory, but if there is, no matter what, we'll be happy together. That's right, no matter which life they lived, they were always happy together. A princess with a weird figure had just been born. Why was that? And what would happen with her? Let's follow Woa Fairy Tales with today's story.
Once upon a time, in a kingdom, there lived a king who was very extravagant. He always found all the ways to satisfy his joy. One day, he arrived at a beautiful stream. The water here was so clear and cool. That made the king really interested. Then, he ordered his people to change the flow direction, leading to the palace for enjoying the fresh water every day. That huh? made the goddess who ruled the stream so angry. She went to find the king. You need to turn the stream back like before, or the living creatures here will be badly affected. They're just some little creatures. They're not worth my concern. So I will punish you to make you understand about the importance of the water source. <laughs> At that moment, the king didn't care much about what the goddess had said. Time kept going, and the queen gave birth to a little princess. But there was a weird thing that all of her body was water. In contrast, her real figure could only be revealed when she was in the water. Being not able to accept a weird daughter, the king immediately ordered his people to bring her out of the palace, leaving the princess on her own. Strangely, right after that, the spirits appeared to protect the little princess. They brought her to a deserted island, and from that moment she lived there with other spirits. They called her Apulia. Many years later, there was a ship landed at that island. <laughs> Prince Bertram, it looks like we've just discovered a new island! It's so wonderful here! It's even more beautiful than all the islands that I have been to! I feel that we will be able to collect many more samples here today! <laughs> huh? Stop it! Prince! Ah! It's... It's a poisonous snake! Huh? Uh, don't harm them! Huh? Huh? I'm really sorry for the thing earlier. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> so, you have never left this island. It must be so lonely when staying here. Hmm. Do you want to go with us? There's a lot of interesting things out there. But... You have anything to worry? Hmm? I'm afraid that I will scare you. <laughs> it's all right. I have been to many places and seen many weird things. Just let me know. Hearing huh? that, Apulia hmm? slowly stepped out of the water. Her <laughs> body started to change. <laughs> you are so beautiful. I have never seen such a wonderful thing like that before. Finally, <laughs> She decided to follow Bertram to come back to the land. Huh? <laughs> the prince immediately ordered his people to renovate a beautiful room for her. Do you like it? It's wonderful! Thank you so much! <laughs> From that moment, Apulia stayed at a palace with the prince. <laughs> hmm. There was a servant who brought a withered plant huh? passed by. She suddenly asked huh? her to give her the potted plants. <laughs> then, she used her power to make the potted plants fresh again. <laughs> you can't even do this? That's astonishing! I have the ability to bring life into the water source and make the water fresher. So that's the reason why the water in the palace became cleaner and fresher since the day you came here. <laughs> hmm. This girl is a great threat to my plan. I have to do something. Right. The next day, Apulia was woken up by the noise from the crow. At that very moment, she realized that the stream crossing the palace was darkened. Capture that witch! 
She took all the life of the water away. We have to eliminate her before things get worse. Stop! Huh? Everything is still not clear. How dare you decide it by yourself? My prince, don't let her fool you. She's just taking advantage of you. No one has the weird appearance like her. She's definitely a witch. <laughs> prince, please make it quick. Huh? If the chaplain knows this, I will be punished. I get it. Prince, please believe me. I'm not a witch. I believe you. However... My father king really trusts that chaplain. I need to find his ambition and the strong evidences if I want to expose him. But first, please take me out of here. I need to purify that poisonous water before so many people will be harmed. <laughs> Aplia, you're so warm-hearted. Despite being misunderstood, you still want to help others. I did nothing wrong, so I'm not afraid of anything. The truth will forever be the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Help me! Please! The witch wants to harm me! <clears throat> <clears throat> After escaping, they went to the upstream to discover the reasons. <clears throat> Indeed, they found a poison potion which had been dissolved into the water. <clears throat> Hmm? The smell of that potion is similar to the smell that I could feel in the hmm? withered plant some days ago. Hmm. I will investigate it. Just quickly find the instigator and stop him. Don't let him hmm. poison at other places. I will try to purify the water as soon as possible. Alright, I'll be right back. <laughs> the chaplain had also got the information huh? that Apulia had escaped. That witch indeed caused this. The water is clear again. How useless they are! <laughs> As I guess, you are the threat to my plan. Then he went out to attack Apulia. Apulia controlled the water to create a shield to cover herself. Why did you try poisoning the water? It will claim many innocent lives. That's exactly my ambition. After the people get poisoned, I will be the only one who has the antidote. At that time, I will be able to control this kingdom. And even the neighbor kingdom, where people also use that source of water. You are so cruel. You'll probably have to pay the price. <laughs> After receiving all the power attacks from the chaplain, the shield was finally destroyed. There will be no one who can prevent my plan anymore! <laughs> However, the prince suddenly appeared and stopped the chaplain. <laughs> prince, what are you doing? This witch is trying to take the life from the water! We have to stop her! Don't try to be shifty. I saw so many weird herbals and even the withered plants in your room. And they have similar smell with the poison I found earlier. You are the one who did this terrible thing! Right at that time, thanks for Apulia, the water was clean again. But for being received too much poison, she was exhausted, then collapsed. Oh no! Apulia! Wake up! Apulia! But Apulia still didn't reply to him. Suddenly, from nowhere, the spirits appeared and surrounded Apulia. They used their powers to heal Apulia. Not long after, she gradually woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Apulia, I'm really glad that you're still safe. Thank all of you spirits for helping her. Apulia saved us. Our kingdom will always be grateful to you. 
Strangely, <laughs> when Apulia stepped out of the water, she still could keep her real figure. Then, a grand wedding between Apulia and Prince Bertram was solemnly held. They invited all of the royal members from the neighbor kingdoms, including mm. Apulia's father. Listening to the story about Apulia, he could recognize his daughter immediately. After abandoning Apulia, his kingdom had to face with serious shortage of water, making the living creatures miserable. He asked mm. for help everywhere, but no one agreed to help him. In the huh? most desperate moments, <laughs> Prince Bertram's father got the information and they came to help Apulia's <laughs> father. Thanks for the water source from Bertram's kingdom, Apulia's father finally could maintain the lives in his kingdom. The mm. king was so regretful that he had been huh? looking for his daughter for years, but he <sighs> didn't get any clue. With a sincere apology from her father, <laughs> Apulia decided to forgive him. And then, she lived happily forever after. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived two beautiful and talented princesses. Meanwhile, the elder sister Clara had the light magic power of developing plants and trees. The younger sister Beth had the power of destroying everything. Therefore, the king and the queen wasn't so satisfied with Beth and they always praised Clara. That made Beth jealous and she thought that her parents didn't love her. When the two princesses matured, the queen got seriously ill and she passed away prematurely. Princess Clara always supported her father to care for the life of the people, and she was much praised by them. In contrast, Beth always got the criticism from the people because her magic couldn't help them, and it even destroyed everything. It made her so angry that she immediately destroyed everything to release her anger. It made the king so upset with her. Time passed by, and the king got older and weaker. Before passing away, he used all of his power to create a crown. Clara, this is the most powerful crown. It will give you my power. I want you to rule this kingdom for me, and provide the people a peaceful life. Being so depressed, Clara held her tears to prepare for the coronation. Why do Clara always have everything and nothing for me? I cannot resign everything like this anymore! On the night before the coronation, when her sister was sound asleep, Beth snuck into her room and stole the crown. <laughs> when Clara discovered everything, it was too late. Huh? Being exposed to the dark magic, huh? the crown was being darkened. Right after that, Beth attacked Clara. Receiving the power source from the crown, Beth easily defeated her sister. Clara got seriously injured and had to leave the palace. When seeing Clara in danger, the people in the kingdom teamed up to protect her and move her to another place. Being too angry while seeing the people helped Clara escape, Beth immediately turned all of them into stone. From that moment, the people in the kingdom had to experience a miserable life under the rule of Beth. She continuously created disgusting monsters to search for Clara. The monsters destroyed everything on their way. All the places in the kingdom were full of devastation. About Clara, after successfully escaping from the kingdom, she was helped by a kind couple. Hmm? Being grateful for what Clara had done before to give the people a peaceful life, they took care of her by all their heart. Some time later, her health finally recovered. However, her magic power wasn't as strong as before. Huh? Huh? Oh no, that fight weakened my magic power. What should I do to help you? I'm not deserved with the expectation of you and my father, King. No, Clara. You are the most deserving one for ruling this kingdom. 
It's not because you're strong. It's because you have a warm heart. But now I really don't know what to do to help everyone. <laughs> <sighs> that evening, the mm. couple discussed mm. with the villagers to find a solution. There's still one way to help the princess. We have to give her all of our power. But the difficult thing is that she must have a totally pure heart. If she doesn't have it, the ritual will fail and we will all be in danger. The princess has a good heart. I believe her. Yes, I believe her too. Then all the villagers agreed to give her their power. The next huh? morning, they told Clara their decision. No, if we do that, you all will lose your magic power forever. Clara, we do this not only for you, but also for all of us. For this kingdom, if no one can stop Beth, we won't be able to live peacefully. <laughs> we hope that you will save this kingdom. Clara can feel the sincerity from everyone, so she had no choice but to accept it. The ritual was performed right after that. Everyone focused on transferring their power to Clara. When the ritual finished, Clara could feel the strong magic power which was flowing inside her body. In contrast, the people became weaker. I won't let you down. I will bring back the peaceful life to this kingdom. Clara quickly went back to the palace to find Beth. Beloved sister, where have you been? You made me look for you the whole time. Beth, stop creating those monsters. You will destroy the kingdom. Oh, really? That's really good. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> Beth, I'm begging you, please. Stop it before it's too late. Parents would be hurtful if they knew you had made all these things. Don't talk about them. They only love you. I was nothing in their eyes. Even the lowly people out there didn't respect me. I have to make them kneel before me. Attack! <laughs> Beth, huh? with the support of the crown, easily defeated Clara. You still want to stop me? Even when you're too weak? <laughs> when Beth was about to finish Clara, then Clara came up with an idea. She quickly hit the crown. The crown was shaking and spread out an energy, giving Beth a severe headache. It was sucking Beth's magic power. Clara didn't have the heart to see her sister being absorbed by the crown. Clara rushed there to help Beth. After a while, the crown was gradually back to normal. Right at that moment, the elder and the other villagers just reached the palace and saw everything. The royal crown also has its own thought. When receiving the power of justice from Clara, it woke up and realized its real master. <laughs> By her power, Clara purified Beth's dark magic and helped the kingdom become prosperous like before. Huh? 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 <laughs> then she gave the magic power back to the villagers. And about Beth, she used her magic power to destroy all of the remaining monsters. She also took the mission of fighting against the dark forces who intended to threaten the kingdom. From that moment, the kingdom experienced peaceful days with the rule of the two princesses.